know something? I've been holding out for an entire year to review my RS V4 because I wanted to get to know it inside and out before I came to you guys and told you exactly what I thought of the bike. Normally I would get a bike, I would review it right away, but with this bike, because it's so special, I wanted to give it some time. And after a full year's worth of riding on the track, as well as on the road, I think now it's time to do the full review. And with that said, if I can sum up this review with just one sentence, it would be that the RSV4 is a motorcycle that you don't know you want one until you actually have it. Despite people telling you that you shouldn't be buying one. It's truly a remarkable motorcycle for $19,000 for the non-factory version in a world of super bikes that's dominated by Ducati as well as BMW and other motorcycles in the same genre. I purchased my non-factory version for $19,000 because I thought it was a great value and because I wasn't interested in electronic suspension. If you're a big fan of MotoGP as well as Moto America, you'll notice that none of the teams use electronic suspension. Everyone has manual suspension. They use manual suspension because it's predictable. If you go on the same turn twice, you'll know exactly how the bike will perform. The benefit of electronic suspension is that it's geared more towards road use because if you're riding it on the road, it can soothe out the bumps really easily. But when you're on the track, it's less predictable. And so this is the reason why I chose the non-factory version. And of course, it's cheaper by seven or eight thousand dollars. But anyway, before we get too deep into this review, I want to first talk about some of its specs. The power plant on my RSV4 is a 1099 cc V4 engine that produces a mind-bending 217 horsepower. Top speed on the motorcycle is about 189 miles per hour, but I've seen videos on the internet where people have taken it beyond 200 miles an hour. The ECU for the RSV4 is the latest generation Morelli Magneti 11 MP ECU. The outgoing previous generation of the RSV4 had 80 pins, while the newer version has 100 and 44 pins. They say that it has four times the clock frequency of the ECU of the previous generation as well as four times more memory. So what does this exactly mean for the real world? Better electronic capability when you're out on the track, better performance, better rideability, etc, etc. It's just an overall better bike because of the electronics. And this is why I feel like a superhero when I go to the track and come back home in one piece. Meanwhile, the electronics are saving me from multiple high sides. And depending on who you ask and which website you're looking at, some websites say it weighs 445 pounds wet and other websites say that it weighs 465 pounds wet. However, my bike weighs 20 pounds and 11 ounces less than what the figures are because of all the mods that I've done to it, which we will discuss later on in this video. And I like to believe that the motorcycle's wet weight is 445 pounds based on how it feels when I'm actually riding the bike, which we will also talk about once we get to the track performance section. As far as the Aprilia electronic suite, otherwise known as APRC, you have three different riding modes for the street, which is user mode, street mode, and sport mode. With user mode, you can change all the configurations with the exception of maybe two or three of the configurations. And then of course you have track one, track two, and then race mode. And those are all user defined. You can change pretty much everything in there. I most of the time ride in sport mode and I ride in the middle tier configuration for the engine management. Trust me when I tell you this, you have absolutely no idea the monster underneath you because this thing will rip your arms out if you're not ready for it. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. But anyway, if you're a sensible rider and not someone like me who does 10 miles per gallon, the motorcycle is capable of doing 34 miles per gallon. Quite honestly, I don't commute with the motorcycle. This is purely for pleasure use and doing the occasional track use. So my mind is really not all that concerned with MPG. However, if you are concerned with MPG, I believe it'll do anywhere between 130 to 160 miles on a single tank. But anyway, there are a lot of super bikes in the market in 2023. You have the Ducati V4S as well as the V4 base model. And then you also have the BMW S1000 RR and then you have the M1000 RR as well. And then of course you also have the Yamaha R1, which really hasn't been updated in a very, very long time. So I don't really consider it a true competitor anymore. And so the reason why I chose to buy the Aprilia RSV4 is because at the time I bought it, which was in early 2022, it had the most horsepower and I believe it still currently has the most horsepower sitting at 217. And if you tune it like I did, do about 195 to 200 horsepower at the rear wheel, which is absolutely 
mind bending when you actually twist the throttle and feel how this thing performs. It's absolutely mind bending. You have to experience this for yourself. Besides that, at the time I purchased it, it had the best electronics package. The RSV4 is a really, really muscular motorcycle. I love the wings that protrudes out on the side of the motorcycle. It looks like a manta ray from the side and it's absolutely beautiful. I've read this on their website and Aprilia is claiming that they've tested the aerodynamics through a wind tunnel. So I believe that the downforce is actually for real because when I was on the track, this thing made me feel like an absolute superhero. But more on that later because as I mentioned before, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the track portion as well. And you can call me biased if you want, but one of the main selling points of this motorcycle for me was the sound. Because I think that Aprilia's V4 engine is the best sounding V4 engine in the entire world. So now let's talk a little bit about city and highway riding because I know a lot of you guys are not track enthusiasts, but you just want a cool bike. First of all, you may or may not know this, but the RSV4 is a race bike meant for the road with headlights, taillights, and a number plate behind you. And naturally, it comes with an aggressive position and it's gonna take a toll on your body if you're not used to riding sport bikes or you're not in good shape. However, the RSV4 is a pretty modern motorcycle, not like my previous R6 where it was super, super aggressive. The R6 that I had was not a modern motorcycle. It was a motorcycle that was made 20 years ago and it really hasn't changed. I still think that the R6 is a race bike on the road and a race bike on the street. But with the new crop of motorcycles like the RSV4, as well as the Ducati, Panigale, and the S1000RR, these are more road-friendly motorcycles for the street first and then the track second. But anyway, there's some good news because the RSV4 comes with cruise control. You get 217 horsepower and cruise control. How much better does it get? It doesn't get any better than this, guys. I'm telling you. Cruise control probably is my favorite feature of the bike because I usually put it into third or fourth gear. I sit up like this, take my hand off of the wheel, and I'm on the coast riding with the left side. There's the water, it's absolutely beautiful, and the bike is pretty much riding itself, and I'm conserving my energy. And the next time I put my hand on the handlebar is a few minutes later where there's a stop sign or maybe a red light. And at that point, I've already had a lot of rest, so I'm not tired anymore. And this is one of the great things about the RSV4 as well as the S1000RR because they have cruise control. This is what makes modern sport bikes so amazing. And with that being said, after a full day of riding, regardless if I'm riding four hours or six hours, I'm not tired at the end of the day. And just in case you're wondering, I'm in my late 40s. However, I go to the gym four or five times a week and I watch what I eat. And although I'm really not on any diet per se, for the last 10 or 12 years, I've been eating paleo and that keeps my energy levels really consistent as well as my weight. And on top of that, I go to the gym. And the other thing that's really benefited me is that the last four years I've been riding motorcycles, I've been riding primarily sport bikes. I started with the RC390, upgraded my way all the way up to the RSV4 in four years. So my body is pretty much used to riding sport bikes. So if you're used to riding sport bikes, the RSV4 is pretty much a breeze because of the added cruise control. You can put it in cruise control, take long breaks, and then with stoplights, you're okay. But that being said, if you're not used to riding sport bikes and the RC4 is gonna be your first bike, it's probably a good idea to get a gym membership and start eating healthy because I'm telling you, it's a remarkable motorcycle and regardless of how old you are, it doesn't really make a difference because I'm in my late 40s. So if you're a young guy or girl wanting to get this bike for the first time, it's really worth buying it. Just get in shape. Because honestly, these motorcycles will disappear one day. Maybe in the next 10 or 15 years, these things won't exist anymore. And we'll all be riding motorcycles that are powered by batteries. And quite honestly, I'm probably not going to be interested in that. And I may just give up riding motorcycles altogether. One reason why I ride is because of that sound. Oh, the RSV4 sounds absolutely ruckus. So now, considering that this motorcycle is a track weapon, let's move our focus on to the track performance of the motorcycle. If I bought this bike when it was first introduced in 2021 and I created a review for it based off of what's currently in the market, I would probably say that it has the best handling, the best electronics package, the best steering, the most power, etc., etc. Because at that time, it genuinely did. However, three years later, the superbike market has really changed because Ducati as well as BMW have created a bit more advanced electronics and they've made changes to their aerodynamics as well as their chassis. Aprilia really hasn't made any changes to their motorcycles. And I think in 2023, if you want the best performance, 
then you would probably get the Ducati V4S. Because in my opinion, for $32,000, you're getting the best of the best. If you look at MotoGP, what's dominating at the current moment? It's Ducati. That being said, Ducati is currently dominating on the street as well as in MotoGP. So that's the best of the best at the moment. But that being said, I'm thoroughly convinced that for me at least, the RC4 is the best handling super sport that I've ever ridden. While it does weigh 445 pounds, it's really flickable in and out of corners and of course exiting out of corners. I forgot which video it was, but I've said it in the past before where I felt that the RC4 felt exactly like my R6 in and out of corners. It's very, very flickable. While I was at the track, cornering with the motorcycle felt absolutely confidence inspiring. And the last time I was at Chuckwalla, with the help of a buddy of mine, I gained my personal best time of two minutes and two seconds. And before that with my R6, my personal best lap was a two minute and six seconds. What really didn't give me that much confidence were the tires. I wish I had slicks, but in the near future, I may just get slicks and see if I can reach under two minutes. So now these are some of the things that you will experience if you've never tracked with the RS before. I'm not kidding when I say this, but the acceleration on this motorcycle is truly mind bending. I challenge you to go wide open throttle on a straight and see if your eyes don't water. By the time you're done with your track session, you will come back with your mouth all dried up, your eyes all teared up, and you will feel like a sack of jelly. Because <laughs> this bike will definitely challenge your mind as well as your body. At Auto Club Speedway, on the fast trade, with the throttle open all the way, Banging into the gears, I went 183 miles an hour, and I believe the top speed on this bike is 189. That's what Aprilia claims, at least. What can I say, guys? We live in a remarkable time in history where an average Joe like me, someone who's middle-aged, can go into a dealership, buy a world-class superbike like an Aprilia RSV4 or any of the other superbikes that I spoke about, and go on the track and ride and feel like a superhuman and come back in one piece. If you're a fan of my channel and you've seen some of my videos, if I rode the way I rode 10 or 15 years ago, I would probably have a lot of crashes and high sides. Riding this bike will make you feel like you're a much better rider because it's the electronics saving you from high sides and low sides. And so now let's talk about the value proposition of a 2023 RSV4 in today's competitive superbike marketplace. The Ducati V4 is $25,000. Meanwhile, the V4S, which is similar to the factory version of their Perlia, which is $32,000. Ouch! The S1000RR costs $18,000. Meanwhile, the M1000RR costs $25,000, similar to the factory version of the RSV4. Which bike do I think is better between the factory version RSV4 and the M1000RR? I think the S1000 is probably the better bike. I'm just being honest. However, you will enjoy riding the RSV4 more. And it's simply because of that engine. It is so refined. It sounds so amazing, guys. I'm not even kidding you. The S1000RR is a nerd fest when it comes to technology, but nothing stirs your soul like that Aprilia engine. I'm being very serious about that. If you're someone who just rides on the street or you're a middle-aged man like me doing two or three track days per year, or maybe you're not even interested in track days, you just wanna ride the street, the RSV4 is probably the best bang for the buck at the current moment. It's got the best engine, it's got the most power, and its electronic suite is pretty good in comparison to its competitors. Maybe not the best, but still pretty good. However, if you're a diehard track enthusiast and you're a track guy or girl, and maybe track 15 to 20 times per year, and you got that club membership, then I would definitely, definitely recommend that you buy the Ducati V4S because it is a superior motorcycle. As for me, I'm completely okay with my Aprilia RC4. It's got a really great electronic suite. It's got the most horsepower for the money sitting at 217. And if you tune it, you can get close to 200 wheel horsepower. And now let's briefly talk about some of the mods that I've done to the bike. Because even though the motorcycle weighs 445 pounds wet, I've managed to shave off 20 pounds and 11 ounces as a result of all the mods that I've done to the bike. The CRT exhaust allowed me to save 14.8 pounds. The mirrors, which I've replaced with Rizoma mirrors, allowed me to save 1.3 pounds. The servo box, which I've removed, takes away 1.5 pounds. I've added tons of carbon to the motorcycle, so as a result of that, I've saved 11 ounces from that. And then last but not least, the tail tidy itself weighs absolutely nothing, so I saved 2.6 pounds from that. In total, 20 pounds and 11 ounces were saved from the bike. And so at the current moment, the motorcycle weighs 400, 
and 25 pounds, somewhere roughly around there, assuming that the motorcycle's weight is 445 pounds and not 465. If someone knows better than I do, leave a comment down below. And lastly, I know you guys have been waiting for this, but now I want to talk to you guys about the reliability or a lack thereof. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, guys, but the motorcycle really hasn't been that reliable for me. I'm sorry to say this. I've spoken to the owner of my local dealership. He's telling me that the 21s as well as the 22s have had a lot of gremlins. On some bikes, it's completely random, and then on others, it just keeps happening over and over again, and they haven't really been able to figure anything out. Not even Aprilia knows what's going on. In fact, if you've been following along, this is my second RSV4. With my first RSV4, as I was riding off of the lot, maybe five or seven miles later, I got an alarm inside of the dash, and then I called the dealership, and then the next day it was at the dealer. They in turn gave me another RSV4, which I currently have till this day. And then around the 500 to 700 mile mark, I had more gremlins and the bike didn't want to start because fuse number five kept blowing out on me. They couldn't figure this out either. And then finally, I had starter issues, maybe like a thousand miles later. And then I had to wait about a month to a month and a half for a new starter motor to come directly from Italy. That being said, in the first six to eight months of ownership, I really, really regretted it. I was really contemplating on selling the bike and just getting rid of it and then buying something like a Ducati or s 1000 rr But quite frankly, I'm really happy I didn't do it because I genuinely love the motorcycle. It really stirs my soul. It really gives me great feelings when I ride the bike. And it makes me feel really, really excited and happy every single time I'm on the bike. And so I've kept the bike as a result because every single time I've ridden the bike, it makes me feel happy. And I'm willing to put up with some of his issues so long as they're able to be resolved in a timely manner. And so now the big question is, do I recommend buying an RSV4 in 2023, despite all the problems that I've had? And considering both of its big competitors that are out in the market, being the Panigale, as well as the BMW S1000 RR. Yes, if you're patient. Yes, if you love the motorcycle so much, that you're willing to work out its issues. It's kind of like being in a relationship. If you truly love this motorcycle and you give it a chance, it will make you happy, but you gotta work out its issues. It's kind of like living with a human being. If you love the person, you're willing to work out its issues, considering that the issue can be resolved. But there comes a point in life where it's a matter of time, it's a, it's a matter of, of emotional investment, and some people have it and others don't. So if you're not that kind of person where you're patient enough, or you have a second bike to ride, then I would probably suggest against buying the RSV4 because it does require patience, like I said, but it's truly a remarkable motorcycle. And for those that have the stomach for it, it's a fantastic bike. And so with that being said, um, there is a new problem that I haven't discussed with you guys, and it's the fuel indicator light. It'll just come on randomly, even though it has a full tank of gas, it'll just keep blinking. I haven't really taken it to the dealer because quite frankly, it's not stopping me from riding the motorcycle, but it is another issue. And you know what? That's part of Aprilia ownership and I've accepted that fact. And now it's your turn. What do you think of the Aprilia RSV4? Could you see yourself riding one? And what do you think of this review? Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care. Ciao for now.